Okay, uh, so we're going to look at Rumens, is the emigre, um, and the kind of yearning and nostalgia that is present in the first part of this poem. So our learning objective today, we're going to explain the contrast between the nostalgia of the speaker's youth when they were younger, thinking about the city that they were in and the place that they were from, with the experience of adulthood and how the memory of that place changes. And there are a lot of words that we've done in our versatile vocabulary so far that are going to be really, really useful when tackling this poem. We've got yearning and longing, today's words, permanent, ephemeral, tangible, intangible, vulnerable, secure, perpetual, intermittent, innocence, experience, manifestation, nostalgia, transient, consumed and outsider. So there's an awful lot of vocabulary that we've studied already that's going to be absolutely brilliant for helping us tackle this poem. So, what do we know about this poem already? Um, we know that um, the speaker has left a place when they were a child and they have gone somewhere else. Um, and this is them when they are small. Okay, And this is the place that they were. This is their previous place. Somewhere else. And they have moved a long distance to another city and so there might be mountains that they've gone over there might be seas that they've gone over to escape something and it seems like they're going to they're escaping a war or they're escaping some kind of persecution and oppression and now the speaker is grown up so we have this difference between childhood and adulthood and the place that they were at before to the place that they are at now so we have this idea of youth versus adulthood. And we know that actually our speaker is not a child anymore. Our speaker is an adult. And this poem is all about memory. It is all about the memory of this adult looking back at the past, remembering their childhood and the place that they were from. So this poem not just about leaving somewhere but remembering that place it is all about memory so let's dip into the first quote that tells us something really valuable about memory and that's this one here this idea of a bright filled uh, paperweight now if you're not sure what a paperweight is um, it is something that is used something heavy it's normally glass um, and it's used to weigh down papers, uh, your, um, your letters, um, your post, uh, anything that you've been writing on, your notes. Um, and uh, often they're, they're glass and they've got lots of different colours uh, going through them. And they're, you know, they're supposed to be quite attractive. They're also quite childish in terms of their quite childlike colours. Now the speaker uses... Uh, this metaphor, the bright filled paperweight, to describe her memory of, uh, of home. So this is all about the memory. And she is uh, using this as a metaphor. This bright filled paperweight is the metaphor for her city, for her previous home. Now, this is really nice in lots and lots of ways. And I guess first we can think about this idea that um, it is bright and it is filled. Um, so this, the, the, the adjective bright here gives us this sense of positive memory. It's positive, it's fun, it's vibrant, it's kind of full of life. Um, also this idea that it's filled is that it's kind of bursting, bursting, there's an excess of joy and happiness. So there's an excess of good memories, an excess of uh, happiness looking back at this. Um, and what is it that fills it like a clear 
uh, paperweight like this? Well, it's light. It's filled with light and this idea of truth. Um, it's bright. It's light. And it's filled with truth, as if this memory is her version of the truth, her version of reality. We know that this is very nostalgic and that she must be longing for that home, for that past. And she know we can see that actually through this kind of memory of her place. This place is bright, it's full of truth, it's full of joy and positivity and vibrance, that she's longing for that nostalgia of that place. She's longing for home. That memory is incredibly positive. But we also get this idea of the paperweight, which is a really interesting one too. Because we know that paperweights are heavy. Um, and what does that then tell us? Well, that this weight that ties everything down, we get the sense that it is secure. So it's heavy, and that secures us. It makes her feel um, safe. Wherever she, wherever she is, uh, whatever bad things happen, this memory is like a weight, you know, keeping her stable. Stable and secure and heavy. Um, but is it also is it also oppressive? Is it a memory that traps her in the past, that doesn't let her progress uh, to to grow up and move on? And that again is a really interesting question. And I think her this the speaker in this looking back at this paperweight, looking back at a city as if it's a paperweight with all these bright colours flitting through it. We also know that you can't really see exactly through a paperweight and you don't know how accurate those memories are. Everything becomes hazy, you can't see completely through it like a window. So that nostalgia is based on vague memories. It's unclear um, and a little bit hazy. So she's looking back at this youth that she loves um, and this city that was brilliant, but she can't remember the details exactly. But she remembers that it makes her secure and safe like a paperweight. It ties her down. It gives her stability. But is that slightly oppressive? Is that positivity something that doesn't let her move on? Is that vague sense of positivity something that traps her eventually? Um, so that's quite interesting way to look at her memory there. We've got this really kind of idealised memory um, and then that kind of contrasts with reality. So we know that this memory is idealised but what happens when she takes this idealised, almost perfect, happy, warm memory and we mix it with the reality? And I think that is when this next quote here, that it's sick with tyrants, becomes really useful. So the reality isn't this vague, hazy, or even warm sort of memory. The reality now is, is very, very different. Um, and we know that a tyrant um, is a cruel ruler bit like Ozymandias or George III or whoever else that we have studied or the Duke in My Last Duchess or the City of London Corporation in London. There's plenty of tyrants that we've experienced and we know that they're cruel. And her city now is sick with tyrants. So this is the reality here. This is the reality. And if you're sick with something, you can be fed up. So the city might be fed up with them. They've had enough of the tyrants. They want to overthrow them. So it could be this idea of rebellion. They're sick with their tyrants. They want to get rid of them. But also, like you see in the picture, those tyrants might be making the people sick and ill and unhappy. So we have this image of a city consumed... Um, with corruption, the corruption of tyrants, that almost seems diseased. It's become unhealthy. The people are unhappy, they're corrupt, and maybe even it's, they're all dying. The, the tyranny is killing them, the tyranny is taking away their freedom. 
and their culture, um, which is imprisoned and oppressed. So we have this sense of imprisoned or imprisonment and oppression, which is destroying their freedom and their culture. So we've got two different things we can think of here. Either the city that she lives in, the reality, is no longer this beautiful, warm place, but it's a city that is uh, fed up and is about to rebel against a tyrant. Or it's a city that is no longer this warm, brilliant place that anchors you and makes you feel secure, but it is somewhere now that is more vulnerable. And it's somewhere that is consumed with corruption and death and imprisonment and oppression so it's no longer this amazing place of her childhood now the last one we're going to have a look at today when we're looking at kind of this contrast between the reality and uh, the memory is this final quote here and this this one's really good because this quote is in itself a bit of a contrast. And what we have here is we have this metaphor branded by an impression of sunlight. So here is our metaphor that she herself has been physically changed. She's got this permanent mark as if she has been branded with a hot iron. A hot iron changes you physically, it burns into your skin, and it's normally shown as a mark of possession or ownership. So you might brand cattle or animals if you're a farmer, or if thinking back to last lesson on um, our Agards checking out me history, you might brand slaves to show that you own them. And so she seems to be owned by her city and this positive memory of her city, but more specifically, she's branded by a positive memory. It's the positive memory that is leaving a positive, uh, sorry, a permanent scar on her. So this branding here, we can say is sort of a permanent physical mark or scar left by positivity rather than negativity. And that's that's the strange thing about this particular uh, image, is we have the positive, the sunlight, merged with the negative, the branding. We have this idea that there is some kind of pain or suffering involved but actually all that she remembers is the sunlight. So sunlight here, what do we normally associate with sunlight? Well, we normally associate joy. We normally associate youth. We normally associate innocence. And we normally associate hope. So we have all of this, oh, and truth. We have all of this positive imagery that she remembers and she is branded by it all she remembers that's permanent in her in her memory almost like a physical scar is the joy the youth the hope and the innocence of where she was brought up of this city that she came from that she is no longer at and what we see here is this is quite an idealized nostalgic image right she is yearning for her youth yearning for her childhood and she's yearning for this kind of tangible physical mark of her city or this tangible tangible physical experience from her city so this this memory is really tangible for her but also we get the sense that she is kind of owned by her memories Her memories seem to imprison her or even oppress her. 
Now, she doesn't feel oppressed in a negative sense, but it's like she can't escape from those memories, even though they're positive. So she can't see the reality anymore. It's kind of like a perpetual reminder of her youth. Now, this is so lovely because, yes, she is branded by this memory of positivity and we have this kind of positive-negative relationship. And she's yearning to be, um, to have that kind of nostalgic experience of youth and hope again and the brilliance of this place. This place, like the sun, is kind of the centre of her galaxy. It kind of forms all of the most important memories of her life. Yet, she only has an impression of it. Now, this is the strangest thing, right? She's, it's an impression of sunlight. So this might not be the real truth. This is just what she can see. This is what she can remember. And so actually, even the memory of her city that she has, we know, is unclear and vague and somewhat intangible. So even though she is branded by this memory of the past, by the sunlight, by the truth, by innocence, she knows that actually it's just an impression. She's branded almost by a false memory. She can't escape that positive thinking, but she also doesn't know how true it is. She knows it is just a childhood memory. 